My name is Ian and welcome to my gardening channel, Plant It. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to sow three different types of seed and that covers the vast majority of seeds that you might want to grow yourself. Now, there's lots of seeds that are available, but some of them you have to track them down. And I got these two through mail order. The Cochiana Langsdorfi, which is a, a beautiful summer flowering plant, and then also the white flowering Cobea scandans. So these two plants are representative of things that you can grow in your own yard, but the seeds aren't readily available unless you buy them from mail order. Now in the silver foil packet here, I've got some seeds that I saved from a, a, a vine that's been very, very popular on my channel. It's called Cochleosanthus caracalla, the snail vine. And I'll also show you how to rehydrate them so that you can increase the chances of success. So this is all about seed sowing and making sure that you get what you want. Now the first thing with any seed production is having containers to grow your seeds in. Now, all of the plants I'm going to feature here require a warm climate. So here we are in spring and it would be too cold for them to grow outside. So what I'm going to do is start them indoors and give them temperatures of between 65 to 75 degrees and that will get them germinated. Now you can use pots that you can buy from a garden center, but I've got here in front of me a, a takeout uh, food dish with a lid that's perfectly sized. And by placing it on a block, I can drill four holes in that so that it will freely drain. And then placing the lid on the block, I can drill some holes in that so it will vent. And this is very important. Too wet or too dry and your seeds might germinate, but they won't thrive. The holes in the top are to help with air change, but at the same time, it increases humidity and also keeps the heat in. So it's a bit of a paradox. You want it to vent, but you also want it to stay nice and warm. It doesn't matter that those holes are not perfectly placed. They will help prevent the uh, uh, buildup of um, conditions that are too hot. And by helping it vent, you also reduce instances of pest and disease. Now, my potting medium is currently outside, which means it's at outside temperatures, which recently has been below freezing. If you were to put your seeds directly into this mix, it's a bit of a shock. So by filling up my pots with exactly what I need, I'm reducing the uh, quantity of potting medium that I need to heat up. And you'll notice that I'm not packing it in there super tight. It's just a, a very easy and gentle way to fill the container and keeping it loose. Now I'll show you ahead how it does get firmed down, but never ever compressed. So get in the habit of treating your growing medium with kid gloves. It wants to be like a loaf of bread, not compressed, but with lots of pore space so that oxygen and water can get into that growing medium. And then with these containers, you should place them in a nice sunny, warm location for a few hours. This increase in temperature makes the environment in which you place your seeds much more conducive to rapid germination. Now let's have a look at these seeds. Before you buy them, either mail order or in, in the hand in a garden center, do check the back of the packet. There's lots of tips and tricks on there about what the plant needs and how it should be grown. Not only when you plant it out in the garden, but also the temperature that's required for it to germinate indoors. And you can see here that we've got 65 to 75 degrees is ideal for this packet of seed. And in fact, that 65 to 75 is going to be representative of the, num the temperature you need for the vast majority of plants that you might want to grow. It also gives you germination times, a time frame when you can expect the plant to put out beautiful roots. This is our first subject. This is Cobea scandens alba, the cup and saucer plant. Now the alba is a little bit choice. It's not readily available. And for this, I'm going to use my, my takeout tray. Remember, I put holes in the bottom so that it can breathe nicely. And what I want to do now is prepare the bed so that I can start to spread out my seed. Uh, I don't want it too compacted. In fact, I don't want it compacted at all, but I don't want it too loose either. So there's a nice happy medium where you get maximum amount of uh, growing medium surrounding the individual seeds. 
Now, I always tear off the top of the packet and that yields to me the label. Now you need to make uh, sure that you keep that safe and make sure that you either write a label for your tray or you keep that label in the tray so you know what you've got. Now this particular seed is easy to handle, but they're very thin and would blow away if you did this outside. And I've had plenty of people sow seeds and suddenly in a gust of wind, they're gone. And all I'm doing here is spreading out probably just over half the packet. And I don't need any more than that. If I've got 20 or so seeds, if I've got 20 or so seeds here, and I get 10 germinate, that's still way more than I need. And this is the discipline. Don't feel that you have to sow and grow every seed in the packet. Now, because these seeds are a good size, using my little label, I can move them around to spread them out and make sure that they've all got space in which to germinate. This is very easy with larger seeds. It gets a bit tricky with some of the smaller seeds. So that's our, our tray of cobea. And then rather than using a watering can, do invest in a little sprayer and you can very easily add a small amount of water to just the right location. And you want to make sure that the seeds are dampened and then the growing medium around them so that they can start to rehydrate. So this is our cobea, and you might find that's a little bit of settling and you can then add just a fraction more growing medium on top of your, your plant bed Many packets, and I think it's a bit old-fashioned now, will say plant half an inch deep, which for the majority of seeds is just not required. That's not how they would grow in nature. They would fall to the ground and they would root and germinate. So many seeds just need a layer of growing medium, not for them to root into, but to prevent them from drying out. So this very shallow layer is with that in mind. Remember that the First root will grow out and it will grow down. It will grow into the soil. And don't forget to add a little bit more spray to get that growing medium nicely hydrated evenly and throughout. And that's a term that I've mentioned in many of my videos. Hydration is all about available water, not quantity. Once I've got my layer on top, using the upside down of my lid in this case, and there's anything, you could use anything, just give it a very gentle firm. And here we are again, making sure that we get growing medium in contact with as much of the seed as possible. And that's purely so that it can uh, have as, as much access to moisture as is possible. For the seed to germinate, it needs to swell. For it to swell, it needs access to water. So another few sprays of the uh, handheld sprayer, and we can put our label on the tray if you can do, get into the habit of adding labels and a date. Remember on the packet, it gives you a germination range and you can look back on this and when it starts to germinate, you'll be ahead of the game. Now our next plant is the Nicotiana langsdorfi. Um, chartreuse lime flowers on tall spikes. And you can see me here tapping the top of the packet and that's because I know what's inside. I want to keep the label safe these seed are tiny and it's a very different method of selling these seed compared to the cobea that we just did and i'm probably going to sow maybe 10 percent of the packet but there's a lot more left and they're because they're so small they hardly weigh anything and all i'm going to do is put the small amount in the palm of my hand and it's as if you're pinching salt you want to get maybe 10 seeds or five seeds. And as you sprinkle around the pot, move your hand and you want to avoid clumping. Now I'm probably going to get 20 or 30 seeds germinate, which is ample for my application. If I put the whole packet in there, uh, the caliber of seeds and the health of the germination would be compromised because they'd be overgrown. Here you see me adding more water but you'll notice I'm not putting any growing medium on top because the seed is so small, they don't need it. All they need is the spray bottle to wash them into the growing medium. Now I found that these little freezer bags are the perfect size to go over this pot. 
And all I do here is cut off the corners, and this is to aid ventilation. And then this little bag, you can, it's a tight fit. Start at one side and work your way around. And what you're doing is you're making a little enclosed environment that helps keep in the temperature and also increases the humidity. Not increases it, but stops it from drying out. And this environment I found is very conducive to having seeds germinate. The ventilation is important. If you put the bag on there with no holes in it, you can find that you might get um, fungus or what's called damping off. Go through the seeds, which are very tender and fragile, and they will fail. And of course you don't want that. So that ventilation is important. Now this is the corkscrew vine or Cochleosanthus caracalla. I've done videos on this. Look through the back catalogue and you'll see how beautiful this plant is. I rarely see it for sale, so when I can do, I will collect viable seed from the plant last year, as you see there in this uh, foil packet that I made. And um, what this plant needs, I found, and many seeds will benefit from this, particularly if they're larger, is that they are very dehydrated. It's a dormant stage that the plant has adapted to, to survive from one growing season to the next. Now in the cup, I've got hand warm water. It's not boiling at all, and it's not cold, it's hand warm. And you can put the seeds in there, swirl them around, give them a bit of a spin, and if they stay in there for a few hours, you'll be amazed how much they'll swell up and can start taking on water. And the reason we do this is that we want to have prompt germination. And anytime we can get a, a seed to put out a root quicker, that means it can put out a shoot quicker and its chances of surviving are greatly increased. Now this has been in the jar for two or three hours and you can already see that I've got one that has swollen up and is starting to break out of its skin. So this is, this is looking good. Um, now if I can get three or four to grow from this packet of seeds, I'll be delighted. I might get 10, I could get 12, who knows? but it means I have more plants to give away to gardeners that pass by my little courtyard. And because these are hand, they're the right size for you to pick up by hand, I can place these individual. And rather than the tray that I used before, I'm putting six or seven in each pot. Eh, maybe a few more than that. Just make sure that you place them equidistant so that they all have a little bit of space and this makes it much easier when they are all germinating and you need to take them out of this pot. The roots don't get quite so tangled. If you have a little clump of seeds all growing close together, all the roots will bind together and it can be a bit tricky to separate them. When it comes to achieving that perfect environment for them to grow, I find that using a, a pen or a pencil and just gently pressing the seed into the top quarter inch is all that's needed. And then don't forget that you have a, a little bit of a, a spray to further hydrate that growing medium. Uh, the spray is important because it helps wash the growing medium around the surface. And obviously it keeps the seed moist. Now with any seeds that you sow, there's nowhere for the water to go. So don't get in the habit of thinking that you need to water them every day. You don't. You might give them a spray once or twice a week. But there's no roots and there's no foliage. So the only place for the water to go is when you take your lid off the propagation cabinet, which I'll show you in a minute. Now here's another trick that I use. Take out the spraying mechanism, put the finger over your sprayer, and here you can see that you can nicely add water directly to your growing medium without washing your seed away. Um, once you've got your seed in place and you've got your pot fully charged with water, it will last quite a long time, particularly when you bother to put the bags over the top. Uh, don't get in the habit of excessive watering, you just don't need it. So there we have our seeds sown. Um, the pots with the bags on have had the corners cut off. The tray has had holes drill in, drilled in the bottom and also on the top. And now all we have to do is put them into the cabinet. Now, there's a link in the description for this video on how I made this little propagation cabinet. That is a heated tray, and I put my pots on that heated tray, 
and it switches on and switches off with an automatic timer. It will cut on for an hour and then cut off for an hour. And this environment's very conducive. You've got warmth, you've got humidity, and then once they start to germinate, I'll have the light cut on in addition. They don't need it just yet, but that'll be in the future. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Go and grow some beautiful seeds of your own. Bye for now.